I'm going to begin recording and we will call this school board, uh, the November school board meeting of the Rhode Island Olivia Lake Lillian Independent School District number 2534. We'll call it to begin here. Um, we will begin with our, um, it is seven o'clock and we'll begin with the approval of, of our agenda. So moved, Bookdale. Which is made by Bookdale. Second, Sagadal. Seconded by Sagadal. Um, any discussion or Mr. Brand, so I do have anything to add. I do not think there is any addition that I'm aware of. All right. So with that, um, we will vote. And we'll begin with Tracy. Hi. Sandy? Sandy, you're on mute. Should be up in the right hand corner of your or hit your space bar. Your picture. Here, maybe I'll do that. Does that help? It's still on mute. Lower left-hand corner. Oh yeah, lower left-hand corner too, Sandy. Do the microphone, if you just click that, it'll become green again. There you go. You got Can you hear me now? Yeah, I heard you now, all right. All right. Like, Where did it go? This other screen came up on me. I'm like, what happened here? Well, we got know. it now, so. Nothing. Um, we're just voting on the approving the agenda, and you were next in line. So I did say I. Okay, I thought you did, but I wanted to make sure we're on the record. So for the recording, um, Jamie. Aye. Melissa. Aye. And I don't see a Jeff yet, so I will skip him for now. And I am an I. Uh, motion carries. All right, moving on. Um, recognition of visitors to the board meeting. Um, thank you all for coming out. I do know that um, our preschool director, Lindsay Long, will be speaking as part of um, Derek Flant's report. So we look forward to that. So thanks, Lindsay, for coming to be a part of this meeting. Now we are at our public forum. And this is the opportunity for um, public input allowing up to two minutes of time per person. So this is a time of listening by the board and I will keep track. Um, I will keep track. I will, I will time whoever wants to speak, but if anyone would like to speak now is the time and please unmute yourself and just state your name and we'll just take people, we'll take up to five people in the order that they would like to, in the order they say their names. So if anybody would like to speak, now's the time. And I will say one more time, if anyone would like to speak, now's the time for the public forum. All right, hearing no one, we will move on. We are on to the consent items. We only need one. Um, only one motion is needed to approve the consent items. And our consent items this month are approving the bills for payment. And then we're approving minutes from our, the October 26th regular meeting, November 9th special meeting and November 12th special meeting. So move Boleen. So the motion is made by Boleen. Second Benson. Seconded by Benson. Any discussion or questions on any of, any of that stuff? Hearing nothing, we'll vote and we'll begin with Sandy. Hi. Jamie? Hi. Melissa? Hi. Tracy? Hi. And I myself, I am an I. Motion carries. All right, so moving on to personnel. Number one, approve an FMLA for Jennifer Yonke, effective January 20th, 
to March 5th. So it would be January 20th of 2020 and March 5th of 2021 because we don't want to go back into 2020 again. Let's move forward. So it'd be January 20th, 2021. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what is it now? January 20th, 2021. To March 2021. Oh, they're both 2021. See, I want to stay apparently on scene. Okay, so everything's in 2021. I'll make the motion, Jill. Thank you. It's going to be a good year. Second, say it all. Um, I heard Jamie first, so we'll go Tracy, Jamie on that one. Any discussions or questions on any of that? Um, hearing nothing, we will vote. We'll start with Jamie. Aye. Melissa? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Sandy? Aye. And I myself, I'm an aye. Motion carries. Number two, approve Corey Buchdahl as a volunteer boys basketball coach for the 2020-2021 school year. So um, move Sagadal. Second vote. Made by Sagadal, seconded by Boleen. Any questions or discussion on this? Hearing nothing, we will vote. And I know Tracy will want to abstain. Abstain. And then Sandy. Aye. Jamie. Aye. Melissa. Aye. And I myself, I am an I. No Jeff yet. Seven seen him yet so okay so motion carries all right moving on to reports we have the superintendent's report take it away mr bransoy okay the first item is our election results we canvassed the votes on the 12th uh, of november and i just want to survive summarize those the votes cast and to welcome Teresa jacobs and brian Wollen. Uh, to the board starting in January. And then Melissa Sagadal and Tracy Bucknell are both re reelected. And, and with uh, the margin of difference between the fourth place vote getter and the fifth place vote getter is such that the fifth place voter has requested a recount and the resolution is included, uh, was emailed out to you this afternoon of the uh, for, an, for a recount. And so we'll talk about that at that time and, and get it set up. So, but we are, but we will have a recount between the fourth place finisher and the fifth place vote getter. So second item there was the law conference. I normally try to attend every year, uh, Radwick and Rosick Maloney uh, put on this conference and uh, one of the pluses about it, it's free. And so, uh, so it's always good to go. And they have all their, a lot of their attorneys that speak at uh, uh, from a 20 to a 30 minute session. And then uh, throughout the day, starting early in the morning and going to uh, afternoons and it really is a good conference to go to. It really, uh, you can pick and choose the sessions you go to. And this year it happened to be as on virtual. So that was an interesting experience of that. And you were still able to ask questions. And so that was good. So on the topics I listened to uh, and, and was participated in was the open meeting law, the open or closed. Uh, what do you know about open meeting laws? And so that was always uh, uh, an issue with this uh, School uh, school boards is uh, when can you close a meeting and when when can't you and so it's always good to review the rules on that what the statute says and and then what is just cause and uh, many of the issues that we're dealing with uh, it, uh, we it gets down to just cause of something to happen and so we have to investigate in that sense and uh, special ed law um, several topics there. Um, one of the topics I thought was kind of interesting, what, uh, what are five things you need to know about special education law? And it was really well put together and, and really spelled it out of the most crucial things to, to, to watch for. And the number one is that whatever is in that IEP involving special ed, we have to make sure that we're providing those services and the case manager is in charge of that. And so that's something we need to watch very closely. And so, so that was good. And then free speech addressing the expression of political opinion in schools. And that was a hot topic this year. 
especially due to the uh, all the uh, hoopla on the uh, uh, on the presidential election. It was a huge turnout across the country, and Minnesota was one of the leaders again. And so, but again, it was very. Uh, there's a lot of controversy with the uh, with the candidates that were running, and so. Um, how do you address that in schools and saying that you're not siding with one side or the other? So that was very interesting. And case laws. Each year they'll pull out the main uh, legal cases they've been involved in for the year and they review the outcomes and, uh, and then you're allowed to ask any questions with them. And, and so a lot this year had to deal with, deal with the, the free speech and uh, and uh, we have to be very careful in a public school that we respect those rights. And so, so it's, it's an excellent conference. They do an excellent job. Um, I've worked with some of the attorneys individually and, and I'm very impressed with the work they do. So it's, it's always fun to, to participate in that. And, and I always think it's not only it's free, but we also it's free advice. So you always go with your questions. And uh, it doesn't cost you to go and talk with the attorney and ask, well, what's uh, your opinion on this or that? And so normally that's uh, what uh, one of the big purposes of going. But, but I always enjoy going to that conference. It's annually and it's the you know, last uh, Friday in October is when it's scheduled. So um, then the, the last item uh, is the MSBA annual leadership conference that's coming up in January. So I take a look at the, uh, at the, uh, school board journal and you'll see the schedule and that's it's coming out in that now it's but they just uh, again this is going to be a virtual conference so it's going to be something different and so the participation is encouraged uh, the goal of delivering an outstanding and high quality teaming experience is the goal of it and so I, I encourage you to look at those dates and if you're interested let joy know and she'll get you registered uh, there is no registration uh, fee this year, but uh, by registering, then you can get into uh, certain groups and things and can have, they're still looking for a virtual um, and, and a, an opportunity for you to dis, uh, discuss with different uh, members as well as, as listening to the, the, the video. So anyway, that's coming up in January. So mark those calendar dates and the times and you can let... Uh, uh, let Joy know and she'll get you registered. So, so that's all I have for, for today, um, tonight. So if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. All right. That was quick. Good job. Well, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Not always that way. No, I want to talk a little bit about the, the, uh, situation with the COVID, but the principals are going to do that for us. So they'll take us to where we are with that. So, okay. Thank you. Um, we'll um, go to Mr. Benson with the elementary principals report. Yeah. So I guess the biggest thing that we've got on the plate right now is getting the child care up and running. Um, so that's been the big plate item for us. Uh, we're not going to have, unlike last year, we had two, two rooms of about 20 kids in each room. Uh, this year, we're going to keep it uh, more towards the grade level. So we'll have seven different areas of, of students, um, which will make it a little bit easier for everybody. Um, but obviously, we need more room. So that'll be the, the area of our concern is where we can do this. Because last year, we knew we weren't coming back to school, so we could use you know, our preschool area and whatnot. This year, we're, we're hoping we're back in two weeks. Um, so we can't necessarily upset the apple cart in the preschool area. Um, so we'll just use different spots among uh, the school and, and we'll make do with that. Um, but I think we're good to go there. We should have roughly 30 to 40 students per, or 30 to 40 students for our childcare, um, ranging anywhere from four to, seven in each group um, and then the rest of it's been just purely working on getting everything ready and students knowing where to go on their ipads and, and getting that sent home so we can start on monday
All right, any questions from Mr. Benson? All right, so we'll move on to Mr. Menton with the high school report. All right. Yeah. Uh, COVID has dominated all conversations lately and uh, looking forward for a day where I realize that didn't even think about it. I don't know how long in the future that's gonna be, but soon I hope. We're, uh, as, as Mr. Benson said, we're hoping to, to make this uh, distance learning pause period last for, for two weeks. Everybody uh, wants to know if I think it's gonna go longer and I don't know. Uh, that's my official stance on that. Um, I hope not. Uh, but I, again, it's it, it's really up to us if we uh, if if we do our best to to make good choices and not let this spread anymore. Um, it'll it'll greatly reduce the time that we're out. So uh, hopefully that uh, doesn't take uh, very long. the The county numbers, though, they they jumped again hugely today. Uh, they don't, the numbers we get are, are very up to date. The numbers they publish on the uh, state website are two weeks old. It looks like the numbers on the, the Renville County website, the, their dashboard, which is a pretty cool website if you haven't seen it, uh, those appear to be about a week old. It, it, it seems like you, they put them up on Friday. I'm, I, I'm not sure if that's how they do that or not, but they, they're about a week old. Um, but they did jump up over 200 here today. So, uh, and I remember our committee went back when it went over 30 and we were all, all concerned about 30 and now it's close to 230. So, um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're at. In, in my report, I mentioned that Tom Cruise had gotten a grant to get some, some uh, iPads with, uh, with wireless capability, or not wireless, but uh, uh, cell phone capabilities. And we ended up uh, turning that grant down. We just, we weren't able to fund the actual uh, uh, phone side of it. So uh, we're gonna look at some other options with that. Okay, any questions for Mr. Menton? All right, moving on to Mr. Flan with activities report. Um, the first thing I had in the report was the ECFE's swag bag program that um, Lindsay Long and the other workers in ECFE have started. They did a Halloween one and they're on their Thanksgiving one right now. And I asked Lindsay to come and and talk about it a little bit tonight. So I'll turn it over to her. Yeah, we need you on mute. Okay, there can you, you hear go. me now? Yep. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share something positive in our community right now. <laughs> um, so as Derek mentioned, I approached my ECFE team. Just, it's been a hard fall. I, I didn't know what direction to go with our ECFE programs. Typically we have a Monday evening class for two and a half to five year olds. And then we also have a Friday morning class, which is for birth to five. And so without um, having large groups, I just, I didn't know what to do. And yeah. so I approached my team and I said, you know what, can we get together? Let's do some activities. Um, something that we can give back to the community, something that keeps the children engaged, something that the parents can do at home. And so I just wanted to share a little bit with you. Um, like Derek said, I did a Halloween swag bag and we got 44 bags sold. Um, we did those at $5 a pop. Um, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I was hoping for 10. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was super excited. And, and so I decided, you know what, let's do a turkey one. Let's do a Thanksgiving one. Um, and as of today, we sold 41 of those. And we did actually raise the price to $8. So I was a little worried. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was concerned with the price um, going up in price, but they loved them. They're, they were super excited. And so um, I'm going to try and show you guys really quick what I have in the Thanksgiving bag. Uh, it's, you know, I had to try and gear it towards zero to five-year-olds. So um, that was hard. 
and I tried my best, um, yeah. something that everybody can enjoy and everybody can love. So um, basically, I'm just going to try and hold it up here. Um, we did like a little Thanksgiving scavenger hunt. This is what the, um, I guess everything comes in. And so I wanted to utilize the bag, obviously. Um, we did a little sensory bag with lots of little fall stuff in there, which is perfect for all ages. Um, we did feather painting. And what I really tried to do um, is to show parents that they're not just painting. And so I included, I included something in there, you know, for the feather painting, I included a little note in there that said, use this feather to paint, but some other things that you can do to, um, I guess, to help your children um, develop, I guess, in different ways, as I, I gave them suggestions, you know, you can paint with a toilet paper tube, you can paint with other things beside paint brushes, you know, sponges, things like that. And so um, I tried to show the parents that it's more than just painting, it's more than just, um, I guess, what, what you see with your eyes. And so <laughs> I also gave, um, I don't know if you can see that, a fun little turkey they can make with a donut and fruit and fruit loops. But this isn't just a snack, you guys. This is them doing, they can do patterns with these Fruit Loops. They can sort by colors. They can do fine motor by putting um, the Fruit Loops on the toothpicks that are included. So I just, I wanted the parents to know that their kids are getting so much more than just a snack or so much more than just painting. Um, we did a little memory match. And I also included a little sheet in there about the fact that um, if your kids can't play memory with you, then use this is an opportunity to show them matching, um, to talk about new vocabulary, to show them pictures and introduce things in that way. Um, so like I said, I'm trying to gear it towards so many different ages, it was hard. Um, we have a little M&M game. So they did get a little treat with that, but they roll a dice that I included. Um, but I included a blank dice because then they can talk about numbers, they can put the, the dots on there or they can put the colors of the M&Ms. Um, based on the age that they're working with. Um, I have multiple families that have a wide range in kids that, that got, you know, two or three bags. And so I wanted to make sure that they were able to use this with all of their kids. Um, I also did painting in a bag. So there's a turkey in here. Um, you pour the paint in there and nobody gets messy. So <laughs> a lot of kids or a lot of parents are like that. They get to use their senses to paint with um, in a bag and a Ziploc bag, simple as that. I also included paint this time. And um, the last thing I included was a cutting activity. However, I don't know if you can see, I did include a note of other things that you can do with this. You can put line Cheerios up on here. You can cut with it. You can trace with a marker. You can trace with your finger. So I'm trying to gear it and show parents that they can get so much more out of just a cutting page. If, if your kid's only one, put some glue, dots of glue, let it dry and use it as a sensory activity. Um, or Cheerios, you know, things like that, that, that kids can relate to and enjoy. So um, I'm super excited. I plan on doing another Christmas one. I hope that we can get as much um, interest as we've had in the last two. So yeah, I'm excited to share that with you. And um, moving forward, I, I'd probably like to do this even when we can meet in person, maybe do this once in the fall, once in the spring and winter, um, just because it is something that, you know, sometimes it's hard for parents to commit to the night or the day or they work. And so it's nice to be able to offer something um, and give back to the community. So yeah, that's kind of what I got. Thanks, Lindsay. That's neat. Yeah, super exciting. Yeah, it was very neat. Love the creativity, Lindsay. It's awesome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Say, <laughs> Lindsay, Jeff and I would probably be willing to donate towards your Christmas one, $200 towards your Christmas one. If oh. you decide to do that, we'll give you $200 for the Christmas one. That would be amazing. Um, you'll have to just touch base with me on and kind of give me an idea of what you'd like that money used for, but that would help. Use it towards whatever these little packets. They're great. I think they're awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I definitely would take you up on that. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Lindsay. It's awesome. Yes, thank you guys. All right, Mr. Flan, anything else you'd like to um, just an update with regards to athletics, um, with distance learning, we were still able to make a decision on that. But then last week when the governor announced his pause, which I believe is because people are supposed to react better to that than 
cancellation. Um, we are now doing a virtual coaching program um, with the anticipation that our sports will start again and hopefully have some time to practice, but competitions could begin fairly quickly. Um, I sent out a message today encouraging parents to get registered online so that we can get the accurate list to coaches for their virtual stuff they're going to do. Um, I sent them a list of our expectations, um, three whole group meetings per week, and then each player on the team should meet one-on-one -on -one with at least one of the coaches each week to check in on not just athletics, but mental health and um, academic progress and some of the things that our coaches do day to day that they lose touch with sometimes when we don't see the kids. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the plan is that we'll give them a few days to get ready. We're allowed to start today, but we're going to plan on getting going next Monday with this dance and junior high boys basketball who had already begun their seasons might be able to get started today or tomorrow. I don't know if anybody did anything tonight or not, but this can be learning plays. It can be watching game films. It can be um, doing drills. The coaches are allowed to give feedback, which they weren't allowed to do last spring during virtual stuff. Um, concepts, terminology, team expectations, goals, all those things can be covered. The idea being that hopefully on the 19th of December, when we're allowed to get going again, that we're ready to go. Um, kids have been able to get workouts and develop some skill through this, not have a complete loss. We're not going to get everything we would get out of being at a normal practice, but every little bit we can get will help if it comes time to start up again in a little over three weeks, three or four weeks. I love that idea, Derek. I think it'll help keep the kids engaged and uh, give them a purpose and, you know, motivation for when they are able to come back. So I appreciate that. I think it's uh, good, uh, Derek, that you're emphasizing uh, not only the physical part of the uh, practice session, but also what the, the mental health of our of our students and keeping them engaged in something and and I think that's something we kind of lost last spring and and there was a big concern at the end of the year and I know the concern coming into the fall uh, was uh, was the mental health of our students and uh, and so you take that activity out of their their life that's that's really difficult for them and and so I thank you for taking the lead on this and uh, looking at, you know, okay, we can't have the actual practice for four weeks, but what can we do? And still working with our students and keeping uh, their well-being number one focus. And, and I really thank your leadership and the coaches for willing to do this. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it goes that it's more than just uh, performing on the court or on the resting mat or something. Uh, they're important kids and, um, and we can help them through. And, also bringing in the academics, uh, you know, areas that they're struggling with is, I know in the classroom, we have a hard time getting assignments in. And so are those things that the coaches can help with that. And so I hear those things coming out of your sessions. And so thanks a lot for that type of leadership in, in your program. And I think that's really key. Thank you. I want to say thank you to Derek and Brittany also. I know that poor Brittany, I emailed her. I myself you know would be changing okay i got this kid coming or this one can we add a ticket can we take a ticket off it had to be a complete zoo i appreciate all your guys's hard work and efforts to um, keep that going and allowing us parents to make those switcheroos and i i do appreciate it and thanks for <laughs> thanks for all that it couldn't have been easy i'm sure yeah and and with that in mind the one other thing in the that i had in the report was through our um, rev track system that we use for meals and, and some fees, we do have access to an online ticketing platform that we're going to try to get set up for the winter. Um, we'd have to pass a small cost on to the parents 
Um, I think it's uh, 4% or something like that. So it ended up being 624 for a ticket rather than $6. But to alleviate the hassle of sending money in and out and, and contacting the office and um, I think it's something that people will utilize. I did talk with Montevideo and Sox Center. They've both been using it with really positive results from both the AD office and from the parents and fans, it sounds like. So that's something that hopefully we'll have out now uh, with a little time before winter, um, ready to go for this winter's activities. Awesome. Thank you, Derek. And that's all I have, unless there's any other questions. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Derek. Uh, moving on to school board committee report. If anybody has anything they, they would like to report on. Um, I do have a report from Jeff. <laughs> he's, he's trying, did anybody else have a problem getting on the meeting tonight? Okay, he mm -hmm. says he's having a problem and I resent him the invite and he said that's what he was using. And now I sent him to the website because you can just go in on the website too. So hopefully he will he'll get in and join us eventually here. So I just kind of want to give you an update on Jeff because I've been texting with him a little bit to see if he's able to get in. So hopefully we'll get here. So anything else anybody would like to report? All right, moving on to pool board report, which Joy sent to us. And I know that um, the pool is closed as per the governor's order. And so hopefully, you know, hopefully it won't be any longer than then December, December, what is the date? 14th? No, tell me what date is. Hopefully it won't be longer than a month, but um, it looks like before this time, things had been kind of going pretty good at the pool. So getting lifeguards trained and, and so forth. So if you have any questions, please contact Tracy. All right, moving on to new business. Number one, approve the budget publication for fiscal year 2020 and fiscal year 2021, which is enclosure number one. So moved, Sagadal. I'll second Bookdale. By Sagadal, seconded by Bookdale. Any discussion or Dale, do you wanna do talk it. This is an annual review. It, it kind of lays out uh, how the year is uh, comparing it to the prior year. And so you can look at the total all funds. And so that's kind of a uh, quick um, review of the current year. And so you look at the general fund balances and you can see there it's uh, pretty much uh, on to what we budgeted and uh, we lost about a hundred thousand in our our general fund balance uh, of all funds, and so uh, we're pleased uh, with that in the sense that we're getting close to a balanced budget. So hopefully that will uh, we can get reach that in the near future. And then the last one I, I want you to watch or take a look at, and you can look at other districts and compare is the, the total operating cost for ADM, and so uh, so you can see what it costs our. our in our district, uh, what it costs per average daily membership. And so that's a $12,598. And, and so uh, you can compare that to operating costs. And then you look at what the state uh, revenue, what we get per pupil. And so you can see the difference there. So um, this is just a, a annual review and it needs to be published. And so it'll be on our website and will also be given to the local papers. So for recording. But um, we'll follow up more with this uh, next Monday night when we have our truth and taxation meeting and then the uh, audit report will be uh, after that and so we'll get more in depth with that and so but it's just a quick summary of the the different funds that we have uh, in our budget so it's an annual report we have to pr produce so okay 
Any questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Not hearing any questions, we will vote and we'll begin with Melissa. Aye. Tracy? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Jamie? Aye. And I myself, I am an I. Motion carries. All right, moving on to number two, approve ballot recount wet request. And it's a resolution. Um, Joy sent it to us uh, today. So um, I have to read it since it is a resolution. Um, and we will, um, as soon as it's seconded, we'll have any discussion. And if anyone likes, would like to have discussion, then we'll vote on it. So uh, member Hansen introduced the following resolution and moved for its adoption. Resolution relating to a request for a recount. Whereas the district held a general election to fill four school board seats in, the, in conjunction with the statewide general election on November 3rd, 2020. Whereas nine candidates filed affidavits of candidacy to run for four open board seats. Whereas according to the results canvassed by the school board on November 12th, 2020, the fifth place vote getter received 1,031 votes and the fourth place vote getter Okay, did I say fifth place vote getter? Let me read that again. The fifth place vote getter received 1,031 votes and the fourth place vote getter received 1,050 votes. Whereas pursuant to Minnesota State Statute 204C.36 subdivision two, the fifth place vote getter has submitted a written request for a recount of the election results and Whereas based on the number of votes cast in the election, the number of votes between the fourth and fifth place vote getters, this is considered a request for a publicly funded recount. Now therefore be it resolved by the school board of independent school district number 2534. Number one, the board hereby determines that a publicly funded recount has been requested and is authorized. Number two, districts, the district's election clerk or her designee is hereby directed to take all steps necessary to carry out the recount in accordance with Minnesota law. The motion for the adoption of this resolution was duly seconded by. Samson. Who was that? Me, Sandy. Thank you. Okay. By Sandy Benson. And then we will have some discussion if there's any questions. Uh, I do have a question. So my question is where it says it's publicly funded by, does that mean that both schools paying for this or does that mean the fifth place vote getter is paying for the recount? It means it's a district's expense because it's within the percentage that um, that he, the individual can call for a public funded account uh, recount. And so that's what it is. So if the district pays, pays the cost of the recount. What that'll involve is that uh, we'll employ uh, higher judges to sit down and count them hand count the ballots. And so uh, we'll, we've got that scheduled for next week. And so because of the Thanksgiving, uh, it's gonna slow it down some. So looking at next Wednesday, we'll be, uh, conducting the uh, recount. And so this is uh, supported by the statute that's listed there. And so, but it is uh, because of it's close enough, it'll be public funded. So the district will have to pay the expense of that. And do we have a cost on that, Dale? Not at this point, uh, but basically it's going to be, the cost will be uh, what the judges are gonna uh, cost us, which is gonna be three, we're gonna look at three judges and so however much time it takes to count those so uh, no we do not have a cost figure at this point any other so how do how do we decide who who does that they don't we, have them at the county or anything they don't have these people designated at the county that we have to find our own or the, it is a local yeah. it's classified as a local election so it's our responsibility and the county will assist and so as far as the, the, uh, the people will hire, hire to uh, do the uh, counting, uh, those uh, we get off the county's list. So 
and so we'll use those. We'll probably use looking at three three uh, people right now to to canvas them for us. And so, and they got a the the State Department uh, Secretary of State's puts out a handbook that is very explicit. It spells it out exactly the process and procedures of counting ballots, and so. Um, I've been in uh, in contact a couple times with the county auditor, and so he's been supportive of what we're doing, and he's very confident in the election process, and so they have to do this as a practice for uh, make, verifying their machines and everything that they're accurate. So, and he said that they're he would not expect any change. Okay, so just to clarify, because I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. This was not something that we have to do. This is something that the fifth place vote getter is requesting a recount. This is not something that because it was in 19 votes that we have to relook at this. The fifth place vote getter is requesting this. The way, the, what the, at the state figure that they use is that you look at the number of votes cast. It's not number of voters that they go by, but it's the number of votes cast. And so we had four positions. And so each voter had, could have up to four casts, vote casts, and that's the figure they use. And so for this, this election, their figures, there was like, uh, it was like over 9,000, like 9,600 vote casts. And that's the figure you go by. The state holds the uh, minimum is uh, required would be a 0.005%. And it comes out to be a difference of like 48 votes. And so we had, that was the difference between the fourth and fifth place vote getter was less than, than 48. So then it, if the fifth place person requests a recount, then we need to honor that. That's not a choice. Okay, so yes, the fifth place person has requested this. Yes, I yes. Just want to clarify. Yep. Yes. Thank you. And it's at the expense of the district because it's within that 48 votes. So do they we'll do, do this at the county then, Dale? They no, do the we do it. At, we, it's our own election. Okay. So we do it. Right at the we hire order. the judges, we have the person in charge, and we have the clerk. It's spelled out, it's very specific. Yeah. And uh, I've talked uh, with Mark and uh, we've had some good discussions about this year's elections. He said that it's really been interesting how questionable everybody is, but he said, we've got a good system. He's got all the confidence in the system. And, uh, and I think, that's something that's been misled this year. I, I really think it's uh, um, the voting system we have, the election process we have, uh, whether you win or lose, it's probably a very quality type program. And the Secretary of State said it many times uh, throughout the campaigning and the election process that he's very confident in the state of Minnesota with their, with their election process. And I think, I think he's right on. And uh, Mr. Iverson agrees with that. Uh, he's very confident in, in the election results. So, but it is uh, that this is protected by a state statute listed there. Okay, any other questions? Hearing nothing else, um, and upon vote being taken thereon, the following voted in favor of the, in favor of the resolution. Tracy. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Jamie. Aye. Melissa. Aye. And I myself, I am an aye. Whereupon said resolution was declared duly passed and adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, number three, approve e-learning plan. Uh, it's inclusion number three. It's flex learning days, which we were introduced to last year. Is there anything different about this? This is a plan that uh, we 
initially should have been put in place in August or later, later earliest, latest would be September, but um, because of the different um, learning plans that we had to put in place in August, I assumed, and which was wrong, that we didn't have to do it this year because if we're going to do not have school emergency reasons, then we would simply use distant learning, which we have in place. So uh, the assumption was that that would cover it. But the state, I think, um, came back and said, no, you can't do that because I think flex learning days is for every year and not just this year. And the rules we're going by right now have to do with COVID and all the adjustments that are being made for that. So I think that's the reason for it. And this flex learning days, they said, no, you need to put it in place. So if you have a emergency closure that you would go to this policy then. So, so that was my, my misunderstanding. So, so we should approve it now so that if we have any school canceled due to emergencies, then we would go to this plan. Okay, so we're gonna change the dates, the very first line. We need to change it from 2019 to 20, 2019 yep. to 2020 and 2020 Thank you. to 2021. So yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, but I will make that motion to approve the learning plan. I'll second, I'll second that, Jill. Oh, cool. fine. It's, is that Melissa I heard? Or yes, Sandy. <laughs> As one she, of, Sandy can have it. It don't Sandy matter. It. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Melissa because I wrote Melissa down. Sandy, I'll get you on the next it, one. It don't matter. I ain't fighting about it. <laughs> any, further, <laughs> any further questions <laughs> on that? All right. Hearing nothing else, we'll vote on that. And Sandy, I'll start with you in the voting. Aye. Jamie. Aye. Melissa. Aye. Tracy. Aye. And I myself, I am an I. Motion carries. All right, number four, review of teacher preparation time, Governor Wall's executive order 2094 and the change of learning plan, which is enclosure number four. With the uh, November 13th, uh, the state put out a, an explanation of this teacher prep time, preparation time guidance. The, the governor put this out with very minimal input from administration, from teachers or anything like that. And just what he realized, I think, was that between distant learning and uh, hybrid, it's taking a lot of prep time that teachers do not currently have. And so I think he took the step to saying, hey, we need to, uh, we need to respect our teachers and look at, you know, that takes more time. So what can we do? And I don't know that this is a the answer that uh, we've talked about administratively tomorrow we're meeting with a uh, group of teachers uh, to also discuss it and look what options we have with it um, the idea is that is to take uh, 30 minutes off of the instructional time each day of the week and uh, put that towards individual prep and so that's an option you can do. You can also take and block those 30 minutes per day and take it times five and get 150 minutes per day and do it at one lump uh, of time. So we're kind of tossing it back and forth. The principals are looking at what the, the teachers really need and what's the best um, approach. And so, I don't have a definite one way or another at this point. The only thing that I know is that by November 30th, we're to have a plan in place how the 30 minutes is taken care of. And so it's not whether you want to do it or not, it's that uh, it's a requirement. And so uh, it came out as an executive order from the governor. So we'll, there's, I gave you kind of an explanation of it. And then the question and answer there is for your information, some of the things that have come out um, MDE has really been researching what to do. The school board association is uh, doing the same thing. The superintendents are doing the same. And so we'll put a plan together that uh, is conducive to providing more preparation for teachers to, in essence, will help students learn. And so uh, it's just that to recognize, it's just to, for your review, 
there's nothing uh, for approval simply that it came out as an exit order we have to have it in place by november 30th so the administrators and the staff will put together the plan that fits elementary middle school high school it might be different amongst them we don't know so okay just for information you probably have heard it read about in the paper that's been con very controversial okay any questions on that all right, moving on to number five, review school board committees for 2021. And that's in closure number five. We just put that in there for tonight for information um, because at our January organizational meeting, then we'll look at it again. And at the January board meeting, you'll be making uh, our assignments. People can shift and sh whatever. Take a look at it as board members. We've got uh, two new board members coming on at this point. And so uh, they can have input into what committees they'd like to serve on. And some of you would like to change um, committees or whatever, what uh, um, some committees deserve, require a lot more time than other committees. And so take a look at that and see if you've got time uh, for that. And so if there's any questions, give me a call. We can talk about it. and. Give uh, Jill a call and she can respond to to you. And so it's just for information at this point. Okay. All right. Moving on to number six, which is another resolution. This is adopt a resolution establishing combined polling places for multiple precincts and designating hours during which the polling places will remain open for voting for school district elections not held on the day of a statewide election. So this is enclosure number six. And here we go. Member. Sagadal. Sagadal. Member Sagadal introduced the following resolution and moved its adoption. Certification of of extract of minutes relating to the resolution establishing combined polling places for multiple precincts and designating hours during which the polling places will remain open for voting for school district elections not held on the day of a statewide election. Be resolved by the School Board of Independent School District number 2534, State of Minnesota, as follows. Number one, pursuant to Minnesota statute section 205A.11, the precincts and polling places for school district elections are those precincts or parts of the precincts located within the boundaries of the school district, which have been established by the cities or towns located in whole or in part within the school district. The board hereby confirms those precincts and polling places so established by those, mun those municipal municipalities. Number two, pursuant to Minnesota statute section 205A.11, the board may establish a combined polling place for several precincts for school elections not held on the day of a statewide election. The following combined polling places are established to serve the precincts specified for all school district special and general elections not held on the same day as the statewide election. Precinct number one, um, combined polling place, Rhode Island City Hall, 660 Birch Avenue, Rhode Island, Minnesota, 55310. This combined polling place for precinct number one serves all territory in independent school district number 2534, located in Osceola Township, Melville Township, Palmyra Township, Rhode Island Township, Norfolk Township, and the city of Rhode Island, all in Renville County, Minnesota. Precinct number two combined polling place, Olivia Public Library, 405 South 10th Street, Olivia, Minnesota, 56277. This combined polling place for precinct number two serves all territory in independent school district number 2534 located in Winfield Township, Kingman Township, Troy Township, Henryville Township, and the city of Olivia, all in Renville County, Minnesota. And the precinct number three, combined polling place, Lake Lillian City Center, 145 Lakeview Street, Lake Lillian, Minnesota, 56253. This combined polling place for precinct number three serves all territory in independent school district number 2534 located in East Lake Lillian Township, Lake Lillian Township, Roseville Township, and the city of Lake Lillian, all in Kenyoi County, Minnesota. Pursuant to Minnesota statute section 205A, 
1.09, the polling places will remain open for voting for school district elections not held on the same day as the statewide election between the hours of 7 o'clock a.m. and 8 o'clock p.m. The clerk is directed to file a certifi certified copy of this resolution with the county, audit county auditors of each county in the school district is located in which the school district is located in whole or in part within 30 days after its adoption. Number five, as required, Minnesota statute section 204B.16 subdivision 1A, the clerk is hereby authorized and directed to give written notice of polling place locations to each affected household, at least one registered voter in the school, di school district whose school district polling place location has been changed. The notice must be a non-forwardable notice mailed at least 25 days before the date of the first election to which it will apply. A notice that is returned as undeliverable must be forwarded immediately to the appropriate county auditor who shall change the registrant's status challenged in the statewide registration system. Therefore, be it resolved by the school, Dis school board of independent school district number 2534 state of Minnesota as follows. The motion for the adoption of the foregoing resolution was duly seconded by member Boleen. By member Boleen. And is there any discussion on this? Any questions or? Hearing nothing, we will. And upon being upon vote being taken thereon, the following voted in favor thereof. And we will begin with Jamie. Aye. Melissa? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Sandy? Aye. And I myself, I am an aye. The foregoing res resolution was approved this 23rd date of November 2020. All right. Thank you very much. And number seven is number seven approve the resolution relating to the issuance of general obligation school building bonds and calling a special election thereon that is enclosure number seven which is another <laughs> resolution And starts on page two is where we need to pick it up. All right, and we do the, on this one, it looks like we do the motion and the second right away. So it says member. Sag it all. Sag it all. Introduce the following resolution and moved its adoption, which motion was seconded by member. Bookdale. Yeah, so. Bookdale yeah. first, so we'll go with Bookdale. Uh, resolution relating to the issuance of general obligation school building bonds and calling a special election thereon. Be resolved by the school board of independent school district number 2534, Bernard Island, Olivia, Lake Lillian, Minnesota, as follows. The board has investigated the facts and does hereby find, determine, and declare that it is necessary and expedient to issue general obligation school building bonds for the school district in the aggregate amount not to exceed 58,900,000 to finance the cost of acquisition, betterment, and equipping of school sites and facilities, including but not limited to a new pre-K 12 building, land purchase, a new auditorium, and the disposition of existing bill, buildings and school sites. The question on the approval of this issuance of bonds shall be school district ballot question number one on the school district ballot of an elect special election to be held to approve said authorization. Number two, the board has investigated the fact and the facts and here and does hereby find, determine, and declare that it is necessary and expedient to issue general obligation school building bonds of the school district in an aggregate amount not to exceed 5,210,000 to finance the cost, cost of acquisition and betterment of school facility sites and school sites and facilities, including athletic 
and activities complex. The question, the approval of this issuance of bonds shall be school district ballot question number two on the school district ballot as a, at a special election to be held on approve and off, set authorization. The passage of school district ballot question number two shall be contingent on the passage, passage of school district ballot question number one. Number three, the projects described in paragraph one and two hereof shall be submitted to the Commissioner of Education of the State of Minnesota for review and comment. The board's determination to hold the special election to authorize the issuance of the bonds is contingent upon receiving a favorable review and comment. When the commissioner's favorable review and comment is received, the clerk is authorized and directed to publish the favorable re review and comment in a legal newspaper of general circulation in the school district not less than 20 nor more than 60 days prior to the special election date. The action of the school district's administration in consulting with the Minnesota Department of Education for the commissioner's review and comment and taking such other actions as necessary Um, to comply with the provisions of the Minnesota statute section 123B.71 as amended are hereby ratified and approved in all respects. Number four, the questions of issuing said bonds of the school district said to subject to the conditions set forth in paragraph three above shall be submitted to the qualified electors of the school district at a special election, which is hereby called and directed to be held on Tuesday, February 9th of 2021, between the approximate hours of 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. All right, number five, pursuant to Minnesota statute section 205A.11, the precincts and polling places for the special election are those precincts or parts or parts of precincts located within the boundaries of the school district, which have been established by the governing bodies located in or in, in whole or in part within the school district. Number six, the clerk is hereby authorized and directed to cause written notice of the special election to be A, provided to the county auditor of each county in which the school district is located in whole or in part at least 74 days before the date of the special election. B, provided to the commissioner of education at least 74 days prior to the date of the special election. C, sent by non-forwardable first class mail to every affected household in the district with at least one registered voter at least 14 days before the date of the special election. D, posted at the administrative offices of the school district for public ins inspection at least 10 days before, uh, before the date of the special election. And E, published in the of official newspaper of the school district once each week for at least two consecutive weeks, with the last publication being at least one week prior to the date of the special election. The notice of the special election shall be prepared and substantially the following form, which such changes as may be approved by the school superintendent of the school district. So then we go to the second, third page. I'm still reading, it looks like. Jill, I think you can be done after your step six is because it just repeats the two ballot questions. Thank and the polling you. places and everything that you did previous, if that's okay. okay. So I just need to do six. Is that six? Was that six? You did six. Yep. All right. Sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion about this? I guess the only comment I would like to make is. Um, I, the reason why I would support this is the extra 1.5 million to enhance the included scope items, like increasing the square footage of the gym, additional fixtures, technology, furniture, those types of things for this building for um, the new owner. And I think that that will be very important moving forward. Yeah, I'll, I'll piggyback on what Melissa said and agree with that. We had the work session, had a lot of discussion um, about the amount and, and how we wanted to handle this. And I think 
um, I, I agree with option one too, so that we can kind of stick with what we set up the work session that we would have the 2.5 million, which we could, you know, put into that building um, for Rhode Island. I know the other thing that we discussed too is the minimal tax increase. If we compare the two options, it was only 51 cents per on a $100,000 home. I thought that was important to point out as well. Any other discussion on this? Jill, I, I hope this isn't uh, inappropriate for me to jump in here, but I just wanted to clarify something that Melissa just said, just to make sure that we're, we're crystal clear here. When we discussed in the work session, um, that one and a half million is going to the new facility, the new pre-K-12 facility, not into Bird Island's facility to go to a new owner. I just wanna make sure that that's understood. So all that's included for Bird Island Elementary School at this point would be the million dollars for the disposition slash ownership transfer of that facility. Just wanna make that clear. Thanks for clarifying that. All right, any other questions or discussion? Hearing nothing else, uh, we will vote and we'll begin with Melissa. Aye. Tracy? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Jamie? Aye. And I myself, I am an aye. Motion carries. Whereupon the resolution was duly declared duly passed and adopted. Thank you very much. I think that is our last resolution to be read for the evening. So thank you. Relief. Thanks, Jill. I'm surprised I got through those. Thank you. So anyway, uh, moving on to number eight. Uh, approve the 2020-2021 EA seniority list. And that is enclosure number eight. So, um, was that? I'm sorry. Did. Somebody motion? I did, yes. Bolin. Okay. Motion is made by Bolin. I will second that. Is there any other, is there any um, questions or comments or anything? Hearing nothing, we will vote and we will begin with Tracy. Aye. Sandy? Aye. Jamie? Aye. And Melissa, I'm assuming you will abstain. Abstain, Jill. And I myself, I am an I. Motion carries. All right. Nine. Approve the 2020 2021 MSEA seniority list. So move, Benson. Motion is made by Benson. Second, Bill. Seconded by Bookdoll. Any discussion or questions on that? All right, hearing nothing, we'll vote and begin with Sandy. Aye. Jamie? Aye. Melissa? Aye. Tracy? Aye. And I myself, I am an I. Motion carries. She do it where I want. All right, uh, number 10, approve the 2020 2021. Ask me seniority list. It's enclosure number 10. So move Benson. Which is made by Benson. I will second that. Any questions or discussion on any of this? Excuse me, hearing nothing else, we'll begin with Jamie. Hi. Melissa? Hi. Tracy? Hi. Sandy? Hi. And I myself, I am an I. Motion carries. Bill, I just want to state after, you know, looking through all those dates, I think it's pretty um, commendable at a lot of staff that have been here for so very long and I, mm -hmm. awesome. Yes, very much so. Thanks for pointing that out. Okay, um, we are, we need to establish some dates here. So beginning with number 11, we established dates for upcoming board meetings. Um, 
Letter A is January 4th of 2020 at the reorganizational meeting. Um, typically, I believe it starts at seven o'clock. Um, we'll see what, what happens, whether it will be in person or on Zoom, depending on where we're at virus wise. But um, I will make the motion to approve that January 4th day. If someone would like to second that. I'll second it. Thank you, Sandy. Any questions or discussion? Hearing nothing, we'll vote on that. We'll begin with Melissa. Aye. Tracy? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Jamie? Aye. And Jill, I am an I. Motion carries. Uh, letter B is January 25th, 2021, which would be our regular board meeting being the fourth Monday of the month, I'm assuming. So, yeah. All right. So would somebody like to make that motion? I'll make the motion, Jill. Thank you. Tracy? Second, Boleyn. Seconded by Boleyn. And any discussion or questions about that? Hearing nothing, we'll vote and we'll begin with Tracy. Aye. Sandy? Aye. Jamie? Aye. Melissa? Aye. And I myself, I am an I. Motion carries. Number 12, upcoming dates. Uh, next Monday, so November 30th, 2020, is the truth and taxation hearing at 6.30 p.m. and the audit report at 7 p.m. Both will be in the media center in Olivia and via Zoom however you are able to make it. Um, so beginning at 6.30 and then December 16th is 2020 is our regular board meeting, media center probably also on Zoom at seven o'clock. And that has moved up, I'm assuming because of Christmas break, I'm guessing. We don't need to approve those because those are already on the board. So I lied. I had one more, one more resolution to read. It's a good one. So I want to make sure I find that. Well, they're all good ones. They're all good ones. This one won't take me 10 minutes to read though. So we're going to be done quick. So Number nine, uh, adopt a resolution to acknowledge and accept gifts, grants, and bequests. So member. Oleen. Oleen. Introduced the following resolution and moved its adoption. Whereas Land Lakes Inc. has generously donated $250 towards the bold FFA program. Whereas Ag Quest Financial Services Inc. has generously donated $250 towards the Bold FFA program, whereas Sons of the American Legion Squadron 186 is generously offered, generously donated $1,000 towards the Bold First Robotics team, therefore be resolved by the school board to gratefully accept these gifts. The motion for the adoption of the foregoing res resolution was seconded by member... Benson. Benson. And if there's any discussion, it could happen now. If anybody wants to thank these organizations for generously offering to donate to our school, which is awesome. Definitely would like to do that now. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Sons of the American Legion, very nice. And upon a vote being taken thereon, the following voted in favor thereof. And we will begin with Sandy. Hi. Jamie. Hi. Melissa. Hi. Tracy. Hi. And I myself, I am an I. The foregoing resolu resolution was approved this 23rd date of November 2020. Thank you all very much. And with Jill, that, I got a quick question here. On okay. the December 16th regular board meeting, that's on a Wednesday night. What? I was just looking at that too, Sandy. Great. We got Luckily, we didn't have to approve that because that's, yeah. <laughs> um, so that would be the 14th. Is that? Yes. The, okay. 14th. All right. So let's make it the 14th. 
Okay, just want Thanks to for clarify. Catching us, Andy. That's what I was looking at. I, I looked at my board here and I looked up there and it and it had that, but my phone said different. <laughs> so our well, I was trying, trying yeah. to keep up here putting all these dates in. <laughs> right. Yeah, that should be the it's either the 14th or the 21st. The 14th? Yes, the 14th, oh. right? Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for catching that. <laughs> yes, thank you. I At that time in December, I probably won't know what day it is. So <laughs> thank you about that. So um, all right, with that, any other questions about any of it? Hearing nothing else, I'm gonna make the motion to adjourn if somebody would like to second that. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> all right, we've got Tracy on that one. Any discussion or any questions about that? Hearing nothing, I'm going to start with Sandy. Hi. Jamie. Hey. Melissa. Hi. Tracy. Hi. And I, myself, I am an I. We are adjourned at 8 16 p.m. Go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks,